Are Kelly you a Clarkson. Nikki fan? What? Am no. I a Nikki fan? <laughs> Pull up in the Sri Lanka. What? <laughs> Y'all want to Barbs, the name for the fans of Nicki Minaj and one of the most notorious fan bases out there on the internet and in real life. You either hate the Barbs or you are a Barb. Known for being loud, boisterous, and aggressive towards people who speak ill of the queen of rap, the Barbs do not play when it comes with Nicki Minaj. I would know since I am one of them and I am a proud Barb true and true. If Nicki was our queen bee, bee movie style, then each Barb is a buzzing worker bee whose sole purpose is to protect our majesty at any cost. Nothing escapes our attention. No digs, drags, or Twitter critiques. Say the queen name, you can get some ill press and you will get the Barb press as well because we don't let up. Whether you like them or not, you can't deny that the Barbs has had a pretty significant impact on pop and meme culture across the internet. And today we will be looking at the good, the bad, and the annoying of one of the most controversial and iconic fan bases out there. Today we will be diving into the Barbs. Calling all Barbs, calling all Barbs. <laughs> If you are Patrick Star and live under a rock, or you were not listening on my intro, the term Barbs came from Nicki Minaj's most utilized alter ego, the Harajuku Barbie, and her female fans specifically started adopting the name Harajuku Barbies, which over time was shortened to simply be Barbs. And it became the universal term for all of Nicki Minaj's fans. There were other lingos used to refer to specific Barbs in Nicki's early years. Harajuku Barbies for the female stance. Harajuku Kens for the stance that are fat. Um, queens. What you say? Queen. And boys for the straight male fans. But Nikki abandoned those terms and just used Barb's for simplicity. Stan culture and having a big fan base have existed way before the Barb's did. But what makes the Barb's different from those previous big fan bases was the Barb's were one of the first fan bases to grow in social media. As Nikki was also one of the first artists to really interact with her fans and cultivate her fan base in the internet through platforms such as MySpace and later on Twitter. We have to note that no other artist back then was interacting with their fans the way Nikki was interacting with the Barb's. Other artists still held onto that old superstar way of interacting with their fans, they always felt somehow out of reach, an idea more than a person. Nikki, however, felt somehow more relatable to her fans, staying in touch with them and just talking to them. What's your name? What should I call you? Should I call you Bella? How old are you? Oh, you sound like a little bitty bug. Okay, so listen, Bella, I want to send you a shirt and I want to just say thank you for the love and the support. I'm gonna autograph it. Alright, please get a pen. Can you help me? This gave Nikki a somewhat more grounded feel, which contrasted her more crazy like persona in her early years. And this gave the Barbs a more personal connection with Nikki, which is one of the reasons why the Barbs really go hard for her. Though the Barbs weren't the ones who created Stan culture, as Nikki only really became mainstream during 2010, whilst other artists already became mainstream by then and had a more bigger and established fan base who started the grounds for online fan culture, once Nikki became a household name by the early 2010s and the Barbs became more fully formed, they took the idea of Stan culture and they ran with it. As they molded and pioneered the way stan culture interacts today. Mainly residing on Twitter and most prominent on that platform, the word and concept of stan Twitter has now become synonymous with the barbs. The barbs have also taken over TikTok, with the hashtag barbs having over 8.4 billion views, significantly more than any other fan base on the app. As Nicki Minaj is a very loud and bold personality, it makes sense that her fan base would similarly adopt characteristics of boldness and brazenness. Known for being volatile, hostile, and batshit crazy to anyone who even dares to come for Nicki Minaj, the barbs have cultivated a certain reputation amongst themselves. On the positive side, the Barbs have cemented themselves as one of the funniest fan bases right now, able to create trends and entertaining ways to promote Nikki's music. Barbs are constantly innovating on how they can promote Nikki through social media and even in real life. From placing pink wigs on their profile pictures for the Pink Friday anniversary, or with the newly recent trend of holding Nikki nights in clubs in different cities and countries, which are hosted by and put together by Barbs themselves, and even getting LLC, an album track of Nikki's fourth album, Queen, to go number one on iTunes three years after its release because we were bored that Nikki was on hiatus, and those are just recent examples. Samples. The Barbs have, from the beginning, been absolutely visionary in their ways of trending and being on the spotlight. One of the funniest ways Barbs promoted Nikki's recent release of Do We Have a Problem was with the fake update accounts like these. And then I. <laughs> Also, the recent event of Nicki Minaj's visit to London and the footage of people chasing her and the Barb's putting filters on the photos and making it seem like it was from the civil rights era in this video. In 1954, Nicole Minge started the Civil Rights Act movement. It all started when a white woman named Cardinal Beatrice III threw a rock at Nicole screaming, all women in POC are roaches. Nicole held a protest where hundreds of thousands of people showed up in support of the equal rights movement. Unfortunately, Nicole was wrongfully arrested when a fake supporter pushed her and said she was in a whites-only area. 
Here's a clip of her fighting back, pushing for equal rights. Here's a clip where Nicole was escorted to the cop car. Here we have protesters chasing as the cops pulled away with Nicole. Nicole sued the county and won $23 million in damages. Her acts will go on to inspire people such as MLK and Malcolm X. For more facts, make sure to follow. Like, come on, you can't deny the barbs are funny. That's part of the barbs' charm. They have a sense of humor that is uniquely theirs, and that's why people clamor to the barbs. I mean, just like at the views of hashtag barbs on TikTok. Another trend that sprung up on TikTok, specifically around 2020, was a Nikki flag. Current people ironically swore to the Nikki flag and proclaimed Nikki Minaj as their president. I think the Nikki flag trend is a great segue to what I call the barb trend. In recent years, being a barb has become a trend, specifically on TikTok, and people started flocking towards the barbs and Nikki Minaj for clout and easy content. I mean, I would know since I kinda did the same, my whole brand is about Nicki Minaj and my audience is the Warbs. But don't get it twisted. Unlike these people who are only after clout, that's not me. I'm also after money. <laughs> but yes, being a barb has become a trend, which though has its pros and cons associated with it. What it does show is that there's so much influence held by the barbs that people would associate themselves with barbs and pretend to be barbs to gain some notoriety. Now, though barbs do have their positive side to them, there's definitely a dark side to the barbs. The barbs, we can say, is a very devoted fan base, and their devotion towards Nicki Minaj can sometimes lead to them doing despicable things. From doxing people, sending Threats, insulting someone's family or children, and allegedly beating people up, i.e. Mariah Lynn's mother. You know what? I'm gonna let that run pass because she was talking crazy here. So you really think you out rap Nikki? If you put me and Nikki in a room with just a beat, Billy I'm rapper. gonna out rap you. The Barb's behavior sometimes do border on the more lunatic side. As colorful as the Barb's are in creating creative ways to promote Nicki's music, they are as colorful in coming up with insults and comebacks to people disparaging Nicki Minaj. Most of these comebacks border the line of being edgy and being downright offensive and insulting. I'm a Barb and even I find the Barb's annoying at times. Honestly, there's really no defending the Barb's here. I do think a lot of the Barb's don't realize how extra they are being sometimes. And this type of behavior, though it has created sort of a fear to talk about Nicki Minaj badly, you know the saying, oh watch out, the Barb's are coming. And this one of the reasons why barbs even participate in this way of behaving, it also sort of backfires on the barbs, as it encourages more people to talk badly about Nicki Minaj, especially people looking for a response from the barbs and clout. Which, if you've been on the internet, you know there's a sizable amount of people looking for clout. The barbs' reputation is now weaponized against them because once the barbs do respond, everyone turns into a victim, even if they were calling to be dragged. And this can turn against Nicki Minaj as well. Reading this quote from a Teen Vogue article from Pablo the Dawn, they say, Nicki Minaj over the last 10 years has cultivated a space online that shields her from accountability. As a person who critiques music and culture and been targeted by her fans, it makes it really hard to talk about her or any of her adversaries in any capacity. I've been subject to harassment and bullying online as well as having my personal information revealed online just last year. And this is the type of shit that really irks me because as much as the barbs are annoying and are hostile, the things that Pablo the Don said can be applied to not only stan Twitter as a whole, but the entire internet in general. But somehow, this was Nicki Minaj's fault. She cultivated this type of behavior, disregarding the fact that Nicki Minaj was blocking her fans for going too far during her early Early years. When my fans and I first started interacting on Twitter, I used to tell them, do not drag people. I used to unfollow them if they dragged people and if they, if they were mean to people. However, it's but so much my fans can take. It's like if you fuck with somebody and you keep on seeing people lying on them and hurting them and not giving them their props, you would be mad too. And my fan base is not like a fan base. We like family. I always say that. So I find it odd that motherfuckers want to be able to say the most horrific things about me, but when my fans get in that ass, they want to play victim. Nicki Minaj is not the only artist who comes back at other people. But when Nicki does it, she's cultivating. Any big artist right now, if you say something bad about them, their fans will come for you. Be it Ariana, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, BTS, Taylor Swift, any big artist. Say something bad about them and their fans will be swarming your mentions. So I don't get why the bars are being singled out for this when this is not exclusive to them. Nicki Minaj did not cultivate this type of behavior. The culture of the internet and the anonymity it provides them did. Let's not forget that Taylor Swift had a song and a music video wherein she had every big artist represented by drag queens and she sang and we see you over there on the internet comparing all the girls who are killing it but we figured you out we all know now we all got crowns you need to calm down and yet some of taylor's fans still participate in this exact type of behavior taylor disparaged but yeah the barbs are annoying i know that you know that we know that but so is every other fan base and most of the extreme scenarios of the barbs that are presented are not even barbs most of them are just trolls using Nicki minaj as their cover to attack other Nicki haters as a form of release from their sad lives. I know plenty of sane barbs. I am a sane barb. 
I think. Also, going back to Mr. Pablo the Don, I find it funny how they proceeded to say what makes all of this so jarring and scary is the fact that she is one of the biggest celebrities worldwide. Therefore, people are asking for my opinion. Huh, you know that's interesting because I actually have people with me. People, come here. Did you ask Pablo the Don for their opinion? I compare people coming for Nicki Minaj as someone walking with all their jewelries out and in their nicest clothes on a bad neighborhood. What did you think was gonna happen? You're gonna get robbed. Obviously, theft is bad. But like, you really have no one else to blame but yourself. Same goes with the barbs. If you come for Nicki Minaj, the barbs will be there waiting for you. So don't be dumb. Don't come for Nicki Minaj if you can't handle the heat. Also, sometimes fans and stands see their idols as commodities instead of human beings. And this can apply to stand Twitter in general as well. In the barbs community, we call these types of people manager barbs. The manager barbs criticize every single thing about Nicki Minaj in her life, how she should post, what she should post, what types of things she should wear, what type of music she creates, how she lives her life. It's ridiculous. You know what's fine if you want to give your opinion on something about Nicki Minaj, especially as a fan. But what's not fine is for you to give an opinion in every single thing about Nicki Minaj. She is not a commodity and you do not have dominion over her. You're a fan. No offense, place. Anyways, what unifies the barbs through their positives or negatives is their love for Nicki Minaj. A lot of us barbs became stands because of this genuine love and respect that we have for an artist that changed and shape our lives. I was around 6 or 7 when I first heard of Nicki Minaj and I watched all of her music videos and she just represented this sort of freedom and colorfulness that I, as a queer kid, so desperately wanted back then. And I would guess this is the same story for a lot of the barbs as well. I fully became a barb during quarantine when I really had nothing going on for my life and joining this community made me feel a part of something grander and bigger. And I mean look at this channel. This channel alone can be a statement on how much power the barbs has. There's only really a few artists with a big enough fan base to constitute an entire commentary channel for them and Nicki Minaj is one of them. The barbs really are something. They are crazy, they are terrifying, they're annoying, they're funny, they're iconic, but most of all, they are a family. So to all the barbs out there, keep repping Nicki. Let's chill on being crazy and let's stop bothering Pablo the Don, okay? They seem very distraught and talking about Nicki is probably their way to eat. Let Pablo the Don eat. Thank you so much guys for watching today's video. If you haven't already, subscribed to my channel. And also, go to my Patreon page. I now have a Patreon, y'all. Support me, you know, so I can keep continuing creating these videos. <coughs> but yeah, you know, to the barbs. Y'all are kind of annoying, but I still love you. And also, we have to prepare for Nikki. Hashtag Nikki Freaky Girl. She has a new single coming out, so let's prepare for that. But yeah, anyways, watch out for new content. And bye.